Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, my name is Josh Snipes, you're just checking out this video, I don't usually do this very often, but I figured since with Operation Ember Rise on the horizon, might as well bring this one on out, but anyways, I'm going to basically go over all the operators, go over all the information I have, it's going to have gameplay behind this from the operator and from the reveal trailer that you had at Ubisoft, and basically just going to talk about it at the very end, I'm going to keep all my thoughts till the very end, so if you're into that, just stay till the very end and hope you like the video. Anyways, without further ado, let's introduce who we're going to be playing with today. Now, we have Goyo and Amaru. Now, Goyo is the man you see on the left right there, and Amaru is the person you see on the right. Now, these two operators is one attacking, one defending. We didn't get a double up on either side. But they have some uh, gadgets and gizmos that we have not seen before in Rainbow Six Siege. And honestly, Amaro might be a game changer depending on how she's actually implemented. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of people that are going to have some issues with her. Now, she's going to be a two-speed, two-armor operator as well as her gadget is called the Gara Hook. Now, the Gara Hook can actually get on any of the ledges, skylights, windows, and hatches. And you're going to see some gameplay here. It looks insane. Also, for the rest of her loadout, she has a pretty good stack of guns. She has a G8A1, which is IQ's LMG, the Supernova Shotgun, which is Hibana and Echo's shotgun, and the ITA-12S comes from the Spanish operators as well as Breaching Charge and Claymore and the SMG-11. Now, Goyo is also a two-speed, two-armor operator, and he has a shield that can actually be blown up, and it pretty much sends like a Capital bolt everywhere. It's called the Vulcan Shield, and his loadout actually is to boot. It's a fantastic loadout that I didn't think he'd be getting. He has Mirror's Vector as well as Cade's Shotgun, and he's an Impact and Nitro Cell and a P229. So, no new guns this season, but... Hopefully they end up getting used a lot more than they were using their original operators. Now you get an idea of what Amaru's gadget actually does and what Goyo's gadget actually does and how it works and all that good stuff. Now this is all videos from the actual stream itself so there's no crazy gameplay or anything like that but you're just going to see them go and see how all this stuff works. Goyo's gadget has to be one of the most interesting concepts for a gadget because I could totally see if maybe his gadget just stuck to the wall, but they decided to put it on a deployable shield. Now, Amaru's hook has never been seen before. A lot of people have wanted an operator like this, but I don't know if anyone actually thought that this would happen. And her ability to be able to go through soft windows or soft barricaded windows is insane. Another thing that they added to the season is deployable shields actually kind of lock into doorways now. So you don't have to kind of fidget around with that little tiny gap that you might have. But it's going to make Goyo a lot stronger because you can't just simply peek through a doorway or anything like that and maybe get a kill. As well as you don't know which deployable shield is which. Not every single deployable shield is going to be a Goyo shield. It might just be a regular deployable shield, which is a very interesting addition to the game. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I've been thinking about it ever since I really saw it on stream. But, I mean, you can see just the fire and the damage that it does. It's pretty much like Capitao's bolts. That's pretty much what you can imagine. You can imagine how it's going to shut down anyone from rushing, any defenses, anything like that. Now, another thing to point out is that... His gadget can actually be set off by any explosive. And by any explosive, I mean Ash Charge, Zofia's Grenade, Sledge and Buck both have frag grenades that you can throw at it. Sledge can actually hit it with his hammer. You can shoot it. Capcan's traps will actually set it off, which I also thought was an interesting addition to it because I couldn't figure out why in the world you'd want Capcan to be able to set this off, but I think it's just for the fact that Capcan be able to set this off without anyone actually having to shoot it, which means that you're going to end up guaranteeing a kill onto someone, on an unlucky person who decided to vault on in through the shield. So it's a very interesting gadget to say the least, and we haven't really seen anything like it before in Rainbow Six Siege. Even the traps that we have are nothing like it because the area denial that you have from the fire is insane. It is insane insanely huge i would not be surprised to see it get any smaller also the nomad air jab surprisingly sets it off i didn't even realize that this was possible so that's a pretty cool addition you do have to be careful however because anyone can set this off so whether you're playing with the team or whether you're playing by yourself or you're just the other team decides to get it you're at a risk of someone else setting this off or say if you're gonna get fragged out you don't want to be behind the shield at all because you're going to end up dying and then you're going to end up having to run away from the shield and end up getting shot regardless. So do be careful where you place this. I have a feeling this is going to come down to kind of because a lot of people will put deployable shields 
in front of default spots so that way you have to vault over to be able to plant in that spot but I wouldn't be surprised to see people come up with some fancy tricks with this. Now, moving on to Amaro's gadget, you're going to be seeing her jumping through windows. Now, this is going to be one of the most, I want to say, overpowered at the beginning. And then it's going to probably even out once it gets later into the season. People start to kind of figure it on out. But the fact that she can come up hatches, there are so many sites that have hatches in them that aren't useful regardless for rotation when you're normally playing on a different site. But now you're going to be able to see her pretty much coming through from the bottom, which could be a problem if you're not paying attention or if you don't have a lot of people on site. Another thing to notice though is that there is a delay between when she actually gets up and when her gun actually comes out. There is a slight delay, so you do have to be wary of that if you are playing Amaru. She's gonna be sort of, she's gonna lack in that realm, so you can't just rush on up. But I have a feeling if you drone out well, which is their suggestion, if you drone out well, you're gonna be a-okay. Now she can't go through castle barricades, you're gonna need either her breach charges or have someone soft breach it open, but you can go through everything else. So you're gonna have to be really careful about what walls and stuff that you reinforce, what hatches you reinforce, what castle barricades you put up and where they are, because I have a feeling that castle's gonna be even more useful, and especially when the pros get to finally play Amaru, oh man, they're gonna find so many gnarly spots that we haven't even seen yet. And I'm sure that there's already people coming up with ways to play her. Now, another thing is that the only real way to counter her is her gadget is really loud. So if you do hear it, you can shoot her. But other than that, you really only can rely on traps. The Capcan traps will go off as well as frost mats, obviously. But the lesion mines might just give you a sound cue that you probably already had. So you do have to be careful with this because you're going to end up running into something if you don't drone it out. A lot of this really comes down to how well you can drone. I would imagine that this might get more of a nerf just because it almost seems like her gadget can get her in a window pretty quickly and I don't think so that you have to break down this barricade. It looks like you don't even have to hit it at all. You can just use it right on it. This is going to be very loud but I have a feeling that this is probably going to get a tiny bit of a nerf. Now before I give you my final thoughts I just want to mention that they are releasing a Mira Elite skin for the season as well as something new that we haven't seen. They're going to be releasing what they're calling a Battle Pass. Battle Pass usually has a negative connotation to it so there have been a lot of people that have booed it but I would imagine that this is going to be one of the best additions that we've had to the game. The first implementation is going to be an Ember Rise so this season and then we're going to see the second stage of it implemented in season 4 and there's going to be two sides to it there's going to be the free side and the premium side now this is just so that they can keep making content for us and i can't imagine it's going to be super expensive i'm not sure if it's going to be part of the season pass at all or anything like that but i do know that we're going to get extra content that we can get regardless of if you pay for it or not you're still going to be able to utilize it i imagine the premium might just have more drops or just have better drops at the very least so overall i think that this season that's coming up is gonna it's looking like it's gonna be a fantastic season now, what do I think about Amaru and what do I think about Goyu? With Goyu, I can imagine that his gadget is going to be useful if it weren't that you had to attach your explosive to it. If you had three deployable shields, that might even be considered OP, especially at a higher level of play. But the fact that you have to attach his gadget means that you can't just put these deployable shields anywhere. Three might even be too many, but I can imagine that they might change it as they figure out in the TTS. I don't know what changes that I can't even imagine what changes they're going to make in the TTS, but I'm sure there will be some great balancing options for them. But overall, I feel like Goyu has the opportunity to be strong, given that he has a C4, the Vector and the TCSG are great options to switch between depending on your playstyle. He is a two speed, two armor, so you do have that roaming capability or at least lurking capability. So there is some speed there. He does have a C4 and impact, so realistically, you kind of get to pick which way you want to play him but overall i think this gadget is lacking a little just based on the fact that you don't have the choice of removing it or putting it on a deployable shield and that's the only option you can only put it on a deployable shield now for amaru i imagine again amaru is probably going to be a problem at the very beginning of the season at least in ranked because a lot of people won't know where she's coming from and kind of how to counter her but as with most operators she's going to be figured out probably within the first couple of weeks and people are going to be able to counter her she is very loud and sort of makes a ton of noise and then the fact that a lot of people kind of run random traps and put them in random places will probably end up getting her killed regardless i'm curious to see how she's going to be implemented though into people's ranked comp play 
and how that all will fit in in the future. But for right now, she's not going to be in comp play at all. But I'm excited. I'm super excited for this new season, and I hope to see you guys join me when I get to play the new season and we all get to play it together. Anyways, guys, going to wrap things up for today, and this is going to be Josh Snipes signing off.